The 319 page report has accounts from a number of players reporting sexual, verbal and emotional misconduct by their coaches and former courage coach Paul Riley is at the center of it. Dewan Hogard live now in Cary at Wake Med Soccer Park, home of the courage with more tonight. Dewan. Well, Steve, good evening to you. Now, this scathing report uh, details sexual misconduct allegations and abusive behavior, so much so that it took more than 300 pages to outline all of the allegations in here and 40 of these pages directed and devoted entirely to former Courage head coach Paul Riley. Tonight, the sports world learning just how far some of its own allegedly went that a report by former U.S. Attorney General Sally Yates concluded systemic abuse within the National Women's Soccer League. I found the whole report challenging to read. In the report, former Courage head coach Paul Riley accused of several instances of sexual misconduct and abusive behavior, with allegations dating back to his time as head coach for the Portland Thorns. It was in 2017 that an anonymous Courage player detailed in that report claims that Riley asked her about her sex life and spoke of his own and was subject to criticism about her weight, being called both fat and chubby. Once someone tells their story, finally, then other people will kind of come up, um, well, are able to come about. Players from multiple teams say Riley's sexual misconduct was a, quote, open secret in the league. Yet he was still employed and his behavior categorized as that's just Paul. In another instance, Riley reportedly telling one Courage player, quote, you look good. Last year, you looked like you were hit by a bus. When she gained weight, she says her playing time decreased. It is a power dynamic when you have someone who is an authoritative figure who basically tells you if you do this, this is what happens. Other moments in Riley's behavior include him allegedly telling a player she was, quote, too hot to be a lesbian. And another, I am so blank, I want to blank you. I just found it really maddening that players had to go through this. The U.S. Soccer Federation and NWSL telling the courage some of Riley's previous behaviors were, quote, poor decisions. We need to make sure that no team, no organization, no individual, no executive is ever allowed to put the players in the position that they were put in. And in a statement, the National Women's Soccer League says that they must learn from and take responsibility uh, from these painful actions and that no player should have to be subject to this. And they want to create a league where players are both supported on and off the pitch. Now, if you want to read this report in its entirety, all 300 plus pages, you can find a link right now on our homepage over on abc11.com as well as what will happen next. We're live in Cary this evening. Dwan Hogart, ABC 11 Eyewitness News. Yeah, and there's a key recommendation that teams share allegations of misconduct between each other to, pre to uh, prevent this in the future. Uh, the, the league is promising a, a better future for those women who play.